How hard have they tried to maintain and protect one of the people that they know was in on the assassination? And uh, in uh, 1977, this is from the book called The Man to See. It's by Evan Thomas, and it's on Edward Bennett Williams, a white man who used to own the Baltimore Orioles. If you read that book by Spike Lee on the Malcolm X movie, Captain Joseph talks about Elijah Muhammad going to Benny Williams to try to get the men out of jail who were allegedly accused of shooting Malcolm X. So he was known as a real fix-it white man who could fix a case in a minute. Big time white boy. Also chaired the president's foreign advisory, foreign intelligence advisory board. It's like the outside intelligence people on the inside of the government. Even at one point rumored to be deep throat. That's right, yeah, just let it run. That's Posner. Uh, stop. Let's see if we stop that. Oh, oh, let's go back a little bit. Let's show the face of Gerald Posner, the little mop-headed white boy. Right there. Oh, here we go. Turn, turn on. Let's go a little slow. Not there. Here That's the Mason the Temple. Stop him right there. That boy right there, Gerald Posner. He wrote this book right here, Killing the Dream. He wrote this book, Killing the Dream. And on the back of his book is that picture with Jesse, Martin, and Ralph, with Martin looking real puzzled. Can you see that? OK. And in his book, Killing the Dream, he tries to help out Billy Kyles. Because in William Pepper's book, Orders to Kill, he says that Kyles is a Memphis Police Department informant. So Posner, he's going to defend Billy Kyles and he puts this in his book. He says, um, he says, um, Mike Ware. <laughs> said Jordan came to the lecture? Uh, he says here, he says, Kyle's told, to, he says, um, da -da 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 -da. in his book, Orders to Kill, William Pepper raises the strong inference that Kyle's might have been an FBI informant. It's degrading and insulting, quote, Kyle says, about the author Pepper's accusations. It casts an aspersion over my 40 years in the civil rights movement. I saw how Pepper operates. Now, he says that he's appalled that Pepper called him an FBI informant. Check. But what did I say Pepper called him? An FBI informant? No, I said that Pepper accused him in this book, Orders to Kill. See, you got to listen to them somatically. See, they're going to deny something, but they ain't going to deny what they were accused of. In Orders to Kill, this book, William Pepper says that Kyles, he talks to the police chief, Sam Evans, who was running things then. He said, Kyles was one of my informants. Billy Kyles was an informant. Billy Kyles is the one that told the police that Martin King don't need no protection that day. Okay? Billy Kyles is the one that made sure Martin King had his tie on. It was the briefing at 4.30 after Ray was checking in at 4 o'clock that said that friendlies will not be wearing ties. Coding the people who were on the government side in the assassination scenario would not be wearing a tie. One guy that night was in an argument with Martin King because he was just insisting that he was not going to wear a tie to go to dinner. Who was that? Jesse Jackson. So much so that the argument is what held Martin King on the balcony so the shooting could go down after Kyles stepped away so they could get a better shot. Check. But my point here is that Posner defends Kyles as not being an FBI informant. The only problem was he was accused of being a Memphis Police Department informant. I mean, to me and you, an informant is an informant. But when you're somatically denying something, make sure it matches the accusation. Check. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now, pa, I said, we just wanted, just wanted to show Posner, okay, you can, let it, you can let it fast forward. Okay, now, very important point. 
In 19, you can turn the lights up a second, because it'll take me a minute for that to get to the spot I need. In 1977, this is from that book, A Man to See, on Edward Bennett Williams. And this is Edward Bennett Williams says that Jesse Jackson came to see him because he thought he was in trouble with the U.S. government for misappropriating a million dollars of the Porsche Excel money. Page, um, for the record, page 464. Uh, when the establishment turned on Jackson, he came to Williams. In 1977, Senator Hubert Humphrey had seen a piece on 60 Minutes describing Jackson's attempts to motivate inner city youth to get an education. Humphrey urged HEW Secretary Joe Califano. Now that's important that he was head of HEW, now Department of Health and Human Services, because Joe Califano worked for the U.S. Army at the time Martin King was assassinated. So he was in on, he was the legal advisor to the Secretary of the U.S. Army, and the Secretary of the U.S. Army was Cyrus Vance. His military attache was Al Haig, and his legal counsel was Joe Califano. Not one single book on any King assassination or Kennedy assassination appropriately brings up the role of Vance, Haig, and Califano. So now Califano is on the inside, having been an assassin. Now he's gonna help Jesse Jackson, having been an assassin. And Jesse Jackson goes to Califano and says, Jackson gratefully asked Califano for $25,000 grant. Califano told him he needed, quote, a million. Now, how many white people you ever met? You asked them for a quarter, and they gave you $100. You ever met a white person do that? So it's strange, Jesse, we're walking to the government, asked for a $25,000 grant. Califano told him he needed a million and then proceeded to give the black leaders six million dollars. Of the six million dollars, he misappropriated one million dollars. Now the feds got him for misappropriation of funds. He's one million dollars missing. Reagan becomes the president. Jesse gets scared. He asks Edward Bennett Williams to talk to Reagan to cut him a deal on the million. Edward Bennett Williams says, when the federal auditors asked to look at Jackson's books early in the Reagan administration, they found chaos. Jackson's organization, Push Excel, see you saw that other thing said Rainbow Coalition. When Push had to pay back the money, he left the leaned organization, L-I-E-N, lean, like lean on your debt. He left the organization that had a lean on it and went to Washington and set up another organization. When Push paid back the lean, he leaves Washington and sets up Push Rainbow Coalition. Check? Okay, because you got to watch him. He's a magician. <laughs> but the white man is his Merlin. Jackson's organization, Push XL, was unable to account for a million dollars of the money. The matter was referred to the Justice Department. Jackson came to Williams claiming that he was a victim of a vendetta by the Republicans. The case was dragging on, producing unflattering newspaper stories at a time when Jackson was trying to raise money for his 1988 presidential campaign. And um, William says that when he talked with the Reagan administration, he said quite the contrary. They were not only trying to arrest, not trying to arrest Jackson, but had favorable viewpoints of him, so much so that they cut a deal to pay back $550,000 of the misappropriated money at $125,000 a year. And again, as I said earlier, that's when Jesse left Chicago, went to D.C. Just a case in point. The only point to that is no black man would ever be allowed to pay back a misappropriated grant when Abernathy's son just went down for $1,500. Now, I just want to keep that, keep that in line. Now, let's go back to something else very critical. Washington Post story. Uh, this uh, story is dated July, strike June, July 12, 1999. And the story, which I've now coll collaborated from the declassified documents that I have, FBI examined private life of King's successor. <coughs> it says that after King died, the FBI began to investigate...